And Jack Ryan. Ryan. Jack. Yeah. From Mutlis and Jack's Coffee Roasters. Is that correct that uh, <laughs> Mutley is your dog? No? Yes. Yes, right? Of course. Of course. Oh, I'm so sorry. No? He's the boss. Oh, I thought you said he was your dog. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay, have you submitted? All of you? Wait. Wait one. Okay, we will start with inviting Belko uh, to present the coffee. We can ask the roasters how was it uh, roasting the coffee? Was it interesting? Fun? Hard? All of that. Terrifying? Yes. All of it. Yeah. All of it. Good. That's a good competition coffee. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, my name is Angel. I'm a, I'm a coffee buyer at Delco. So as uh, well, first of all, thanks for uh, thanks for having us. Um, last year, uh, we brought uh, we sponsor a, a coffee from El Salvador, a natural. And uh, team told me this year, do you think we can find something more difficult to roast? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, probably yeah. We, like I have an idea, and uh, actually this is a coffee from uh, from Nicaragua, from uh, from the region of Dipilto. Actually, uh, for you to know, Nicaragua has historically been uh, producing uh, a lot of maragogip. Uh, maragogip is a, is a varietal that is coming from Brazil. And actually, after, after a roast uh, attack, uh, they switch to maracaturra quite a lot. Uh, because uh, maragogip is one of the, is one of the um, I would say, weakest uh, varietals probably that you can have. It's not very productive. It doesn't uh, resist to rust. Uh, Maracatura neither, <laughs> but uh, but is uh, let's say more adapted to Nicaragua. Mm. Uh, so these are some uh, some maracaturas. Uh, the bean is quite thin, uh, it's quite big. Here's a, here is Olman. Uh, yesterday we were talking with Gilberto because uh, if uh, Gilberto is the first one, he said he won 14 times a cup of excellence. Olman uh, has won it 13 times, and uh, always with maracatura because he has always been uh, pushing this varietal, trying to get it to know. And uh, I think uh, probably something that has happened is something that happens quite a lot in El Salvador when you see the Pacamaras winning Cup of Excellence. It is a, it is a, um, a varietal that has a completely different profile than, than, uh, than what the normal varietals you can have in, 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 uh, in Nicaragua, which is mainly Caturra. Uh, I would say something. Uh, if if I see what I, if I can think of what I cop today, uh, uh, I think maracatura is a bit easier to roast than than uh, maragogip. Well, I would hear the roasters, uh, basically because uh, it is a big bean, uh, but it's all it also has a big density. I think this crossing with the with the katura give it, and. Um, these are some of the trials. I think this was three, four years ago uh, when we started buying maracatura from uh, from Oman. Uh, he does uh, he does uh, washed uh, coffee. He does uh, uh, natural. He does uh, extra wash as well, and he does uh, natural. So this year we we, we decided to uh, that a honey could be could be something something good for this competition. Uh, something very particular about uh, Olman's farm, you know, when you go to Nicaragua, when you go to the farms, it's like you're in the western, you know, it's like very arid. Uh, Olman has created a uh, microclimate on, on, their, on his farms, actually. It's like uh, actually very forest, uh, what it is. So you see, it's, uh, it doesn't look uh, like Nicaragua. And uh, when I first uh, say to Olman, I say, like, listen, Olman, we have this, uh, this project on Nordic Roster Forum that we want to sponsor, and he was actually uh, quite uh, quite uh, excited about it. Uh, the roasters can say, uh, last year as Belco, you know, uh, team, team told us, uh, for this competition we need half of a bag. So we prepared it at Belco, we did like half a bag. This year it was prepared from origin. So the, 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 the bag uh, of 35 kilos, which is the half of a bag in Nicaragua, uh, it was prepared at origin, actually. And that's why it was uh, marked with the logo of the Nordic Roaster Forum as well. 
and uh, he was very excited. He was so excited uh, that uh, uh, he told me I'm willing uh, to pay uh, for a trip to my farm for the winning roster of this category. And, and, uh, and so um, uh, we, dis we discussed with, uh, with the board and they say, yeah, we think it's, it's a good idea. So basically the, 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 the roaster who wants, wins this category, uh, not the Nordic roster farm, but this category, he will go to see him. Uh, next year, it's a bit unstable at this moment in Nicaragua, but uh, <laughs> let's hope that by March it's going to be okay. Uh, in <laughs> BP, <laughs> yeah, I know it's funny because it's one of the calmest uh, country in Central America. No, this is not the time, but uh, but uh, good thing is that he has uh, his farms are among the highest altitude farms uh, in in Nicaragua. They are bordering Honduras, so um, uh, his his harvest is very late, uh, actually. So it gives time to bring stability to the country. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much. Did you have anything else you wanted to? Um... Uh, no, no. 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 Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, big applause to Belko and. Uh, Alright, we will um, uh, save some time here uh, because we want to talk to the roasters. And how this will work now is that we're going to look at the profiles, then we're going to have lunch. Um, and uh, we'll look, of course, on the cup results, but that won't say too much. Uh, you're happy to guess in front of everyone which one is yours and then you can uh, be ashamed later. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but, uh, so, but after lunch, we will have time for questions. So I ask you to keep it quite short, focus on the profile, how you worked with the coffee, and then we will have lots of questions after. Okay? So this is on, and Tim? <coughs> Who are we starting with? Jürgen. Yes. All right. Here you go. Should I just sit here? Yeah. You can sit or stand or do whatever we want. And if you want a point, you can use this. That's how the mic up there. Which mic is... Okay. So here's sound. Um, okay, my roaster is a three kilo yoker. And um, I had to roast uh, this six batches to get enough. So there were quite um, sensitive um, bean. Uh, I started uh, them all uh, around uh, 178 degrees charge temperature. And then, uh, uh, yeah. Um, since I have a small roaster, I could uh, practice a lot of, lot of time, times. I did this two times uh, the week before, and then I uh, waited a couple of days, kept it, and uh, tried two times more, and then found, found uh, one that I liked. And then I closed that profile for the six batches. Um, yeah. You do quite a lot of uh, changes here, both in gas and airflow. Um, What's the principle behind here? What's your well, um, the airflow flow? Uh, uh, I start with uh, a little bit less airflow, and then uh, change it to fifty percent, and then uh, to the end I uh, <coughs> up the airflow a bit, hmm. but not by much. Are you happy with the with the roast? Yeah, yeah, I am. Good. Do you, do you think you know which one was yours? No. No? Uh, well, it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. Yeah. <laughs> so between one so and ten. Yeah. If I have to yeah. choose, it's one of them. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Lippe, perfect. You have put yourself in a good order. Yes. Um, I was sampling, sample roasting a bit um, on the forehand to check out uh, the behavior of the bean because I have no experience with that kind of uh, bean. Um, I found out that it was 
been lifting quickly, uh, cracking early, uh, so I did some different profiles. Uh, found that I need to prolong the roasting compared to what I'm usually doing. So, uh, so I tried to replicate that in, in the bigger uh, machine, but still I did a mistake last year because then I did just two shots and I got one too light and one too dark so now I was trying to do a smaller batches like the, the five six kilo batches um, and uh, and I was uh, applying quite a bit amount of heat to start with and then I was slowing down uh, just keeping the the energy constant from around 140 degrees and until it starts cracking and then I was slowing down and just trying to get it to develop slowly to the to the end uh, I don't remember the crack time but it's about one minute and ten seconds so it's I think it's pretty short that's quite short to that uh, yeah but uh, on the other hand we were Checking that on the sample roaster as well, and and when we did longer, I mean shorter roast, total roasting, and even it was easily getting like that burnt ashy aftertaste. Even if it's looking by the color, it was still light. Um, so I think we found like uh, we had a couple of roastings being slightly darker than what we are presenting here today. So, um, what was the? Is it the? Do you have you roasted Maracatura before? No, no. What was the overall impression, or what surprised you with that? Uh, I mean, it beef? was uh, how early I reached the cracking mm. compared to like a dense Colombia. Or so but basically, you have what you managed is you say you reach it early, but it's really here. It's quite late. So that's what you managed to do in yeah, first. Yeah, and I had some. I did one batch. Uh, I was looking in another direction for the first minute, and my recipe hadn't started. So it was kind of being kept in the drum for I don't remember one or two minutes at 100 degrees. Uh, but then I kind of followed the curve later on, and then I got like very flat flavor. I mean, it's so, and if you're doing it too quickly, it was getting too astringent. Yeah. So I was trying to find something in between. Do you know what cup is yours on the table? Of course not. No? <laughs> uh, probably, have an I could, probably I could get, if I'm looking into my data, I could say which couple, three, four, yeah. it's not, but yeah. so I couldn't pick the one. Were you happy with the, uh, the coffee you sent in? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, Probably I could, I mean it's a compromise anyway, because you could get more aromas in it, but then you are messing up with the mouthfeel. Alright, anything else you want to say? No? We'll get back to you, I promise. Alright. Marit. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, this is uh, our profile. Um, we roasted uh, 15 kilo batches, which gave us two shots. Uh, the first one was a little bit underdeveloped, so we decided to do the other one with more heat. Uh, so the one in the background is the first shot, and the one you can see is the one we delivered. Um, so we went up to 65% gas which was a bit more than the first round and um, um, we, um, we want to develop sweetness and not like astringent or roasty or bitter notes and um, yeah <laughs> we don't want our profile to look a certain way but we talked about having a smoother race, rate of rise, so we adjusted the gas around seven minutes. Uh, as you can see, uh, there. <laughs> first crack eight or nine. Um, we don't really hear the first crack, so you mark it at 200 degrees just to have a reference. 
the total time is more important for us. Um, so that was 9 minutes and 27 seconds. Um, yeah, so the development time is like, we don't really look at that too much. We, we look at it. <laughs> um, so our color track was at 48.4, which was in our window, something that we aimed for. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, um, uh, when I was roasting, that was a couple of years ago, if I would have those two profiles and say it was the same profile, I would have, would have been happy. Yeah, that's, I named it. That's the same. And for you, it's a change. How, how big is that change for you? I mean, was it a small tweak or were you saying, no, let's do something completely different. Let's take it up to 65% gas in the beginning. I would say it's like... It's a bit how we work. We we cut our rows and then we talk about how we can improve it. And um, uh, it's yeah, it's tweaking. So if we had another shot, maybe we would go five seconds longer to. Yeah. But you have we a thirty. <laughs> you have a thirty-five kilo roaster, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's fifteen the lowest. You can go or? We can roast uh, 10 kilos, but 15 kilos has worked better for us. We have had more consistent results when roasting 15 compared to the 10 kilo batches. So that's why we did that. How have you roasted a lot of maracatoras from Nicaragua? I had never done that before, so that was uh, very yeah, interesting. I learned a lot. No, never. No. Yeah. <laughs> How, just one question, where yeah. in the library did you find this profile? So, we based this profile on our Pacamara profile, which we are very happy with. Um, Tim did some, uh, some uh, roast on the cover roaster with the Pacamara from Caballero. And um, then we roasted 15 kilo batch on our lowering and based this profile on that profile. All right, very yeah. interesting. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Daniel, yes, aka Panila. Daniel. <laughs> uh, so you uh, work in the marketing uh, yes. department and yeah. also representing the profiles when asked. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So we had uh, one baby and one uh, sick roaster. Um, so that's why. No, I, I'm part of the roastery, but I, I don't do the roasting and I don't do the packing of puppies or stuff like that. I do the marketing and whatever, cuppings. Um, but I'm gonna tell you what this is, because you probably, you might know more than me about this, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. We, um, so we have a 35 kilo lorry. Uh, we normally roast actually 15 or 12 kilos, 15 uh, for espresso and 12 for filter. Uh, and we did three 11.5 kilo batches so that we could get the most out of the 35 kilos and then some sample <coughs> roasting in the beginning. So uh, we went in pretty high, it's about um, 220 uh, degrees and then uh, stayed pretty high on the gas as you can see uh, until first crack pretty much uh, where we dropped it quite dramatically to, uh, to prolong the um, the uh, development time basically. Um, we, when we cupped at the, after the first batch, we had a hard time finding the sweetness and the acidity. Um, so uh, we made some changes and then we, uh, so I think it was actually the second batch that we picked in the end, which is this one, um, which we were quite happy with, um, you know, uh, considering the the Greek coffee, and I think it's pretty hard to find that really, really uh, high acidity or really rich sweetness in it. Um, yeah. Uh, what out temperature? Because you're roasting on the same type of machine as uh, Tim mm. uh, and Monet. Uh, what end, end temperature did you have? Uh, Two hundred and six. Uh, let me have a. Yeah. 206.6, okay. Yeah, so quite yeah. similar, and also in uh, total time, I saw, just two seconds. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. Woo! <laughs> 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 
Quite different in development time, though, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. But that could also be when you mark the... Because I guess you also have a hard time yeah. here, in the, yeah. here in the crack. Uh, one advice I got once, uh, Rostrum Coffee, and I'm actually going back to you, Moret, uh, because it's interesting to compare, is that don't do too many changes, because you won't know what they mean. Here we have quite few gas changes, even though we have a small tweak there in the middle, uh, and you have uh, many small steps um, going down. How, how are you thinking around that? Well, our approach is that we try 